So I got a dead spot right over here. Now, I don't know what happened. And it's just this section in between the, um, the switches. Let's diagnose and see what's going on over here. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go check the ECOS. First thing I'm gonna go check over here is actually in my maps. My passenger lines have detection routes on it. So as you can see, I have my CN train in this area right here. Now, the area that is having trouble right now is this section right in here. So it's not even detecting the train. So uh, I'm gonna push the train forward, see if this area over here gets detected. And I'm gonna push the train back. I'm gonna see if this area gets detected. If it does, that just means that the wire underneath the layout for this section got loose. Maybe it got loose for when I was changing over the um, switches. But if this whole section right here does not light up, then that means I have to trace wires from the actual detection unit itself. Okay, so uh, let's push the train forward. Okay, so light is on on the train. And yeah, okay, so we have detection right there, as you can see. So then, like I said, what it is, it's uh, just probably wires from underneath in this section right here. Okay, so let's go underneath the layout and take a look. All right, so as you can see, this suitcase connector right there, this purple wire, that's actually my bus line for the detection unit, going to the detection unit. And this line right there is actually for that section. So I just touched the wire, moved it around, and it started working again. So like I said, I think the issue might be that suitcase connector. Right now it's working. If it happens one more time, then I'll go ahead and I'll resolve the issue. All right, so for the wow. biggest part of the project that I've been doing for this month was actually the ocean. Uh, now, don't worry, I am gonna be posting a how I did this Believe it or not, it was actually very simple. Just 50-50 water glue mix, toilet paper, and a water-based clear varnish. And of course, acrylic paint adds a lot of life to it. Now, one of the things I wasn't really too happy with, uh, it's not like a big thing, but it's a little thing. Uh, my last layer of clear varnish that I actually added, uh, I put it on a little too thick, and then I ended up dabbing it. What ended up happening there, it, it created some foam with inside the varnish itself. So it gave it a little bit of a milky look. Uh, for me, it was okay. It turned out all right because, you know, with the ocean after with the waves crashing and pushing, you know, you get that foamy look, that kind of that milky bubbly water look. So for me, it worked out really well. For everyone else that might be doing maybe a, like a pond or very still water, I strongly suggest just take it and just Put it on slowly and just gently. Uh, just don't dab it. <laughs> That's the last thing you want to do. Uh, there's some section here. I'll zoom in and I'll see if I can get a better shot. Perfect example is actually in this area right here. Uh, you can see where I painted white with the acrylic paint. But in here, I actually did not paint it white. But it's a little bit milky and bubbly. Like I said, it worked out for me. But maybe for everyone else that might be doing calm water, it won't work out so well. Looking good. Now let's get some closer looks over at the tetrapods. All right, so tetrapods came out really well as well. Um, I probably could have cut them to make it look like they were submerged in the water. It looks pretty good. They usually pile up on top of each other in real life. It looks good. I try to make this area look a little bit more shallow um, with the water a lot more calm. You know, that's the whole point of these tetrapods or the wave barriers. to keep this area calm of waves. All right, so the big thing is the beach. The beach turned out awesome. Oh man, I'm so happy with it. As I blended in my acrylic colors, as you can see along over here, um, I actually put some of the sand down. Now this is the sand that I'm gonna be using, what came from Cuba. So what I did was brushed glue down and then sprinkled up the sand. Once that dry was dried, obviously that was after I painted, just before I put the varnish. I painted the varnish on top of the sand. So just give that wet look, which uh, it's nice and shiny. It looks really nice. Boats are just chilling over here. 
All right, so ideas of what's happening with the beach. Let's move up a little bit. Okay, so we have this little steel thing over here. <laughs> You guys will see in a second. Uh, when I was actually screwing in the DS64 underneath the layout, it popped up through the beach and I was like, ah! <laughs> and I was like, what's going on here? That's not nice. So all I did was I'd have a Dremel tool and uh, I cut it out, made it flat. That's okay though, because I'm gonna be spreading the sand across here. I have brick retaining wall. I'm gonna be putting that up along there. And then I'm also gonna put I'm going to have to scratch build a set of stairs coming down from here to here. Uh, I'm thinking about over on this area is going to be a parking lot and the people need some, uh, need a way to get down here. So I'm going to do a set of stairs, use the same retaining wall sheet that I have uh, for the side of the stairs. And then once the stairs are put in, I'll go ahead and put sand in. Biggest, like I said, this was the biggest project that I had for this month, mainly because you have to wait. Every time you lay down a layer of glue, you have to wait and there was like five layers or four layers of glue and toilet paper that went down and then at the same time there was i think there's like five or six i can't remember now anyway so five or six layers of the clear varnish and you know you're, you're waiting anywhere between 24 to 36 hours for the clear coat to dry up so for the fascia i put that back up but before i did i actually used this paint and primer it's a matte black as you can see in the inside I did that so if you see the inside of the fascia, at least it gives it a break so you can actually see where the water is. I think it looks really nice. I like it. Well, this beach right now from this angle looks really good. If I can shriek down and go swimming in there, I would. <laughs> That's looking pretty nice. It's a really good shot. I like it. Okay, so just before I go underneath the layout to show you guys what I have done, um, just a couple of things here I want to show you what I would like to do on top of the layout before anything else. One is definitely going to put my light back up here. I ended up breaking that when I was, I forget, I was, oh, when I was ballasting. Oh yeah, that's right. So it's actually one of these double street lights uh, that's supposed to go here. So I don't know if I'm going to put just the one there or put one on each end. Uh, what else? So there was the beach, there was the light. Oh, that's pretty much it. My backdrop is falling. I don't want to really secure it up there just in case if I have to move. I'm going to take that out. This is not an exactly a permanent area for this layout. All right, so let's go underneath the layout and see what I have done. Okay, yeah, I'm trying to keep this as neat as possible. It's probably taking the most time anyways. I have started wiring up the DS64s to the tortoise switch machines. Uh, that will be another video coming this month on how I did this. Here's my DS64 right here. I have my wires leading into it my tortoise switch machine so i have two here and i actually have two more uh in the other section over here try to keep it organized uh, i got my harnesses over here plugged in the ds64 has actually four addresses so i have this on one address that one on the on another address and let me show you what i did over here so the other tortoise motor which is a little bit out of frame over there and this one i actually wired them together as you can see in this terminal block right here so here's that power cable for the tortoise switch machine that's over there coming in over here and then you have this one coming into here and the power cable that's uh, routed to the ds64 all right so now we're underneath the coal mine facility uh, you can see the ds64 over there as well as another tortoise switch machine and just in front of the ds64 you can see my ecos route detector there's another switch machine right there and uh, these are all plugged in and they actually work I hope everybody enjoyed the video for Arcadia update number 16 for the month of February. Just to recap of what's going to happen for this month, there are going to be a couple of videos. I'm going to show everyone on how I did my ocean scene, uh, making the waves and the colors, the water. It was actually pretty cool. Like I said, just to use toilet paper and Elmer's 50-50 water mix glue. <laughs> that was awesome. Uh, very cheap, very affordable, and definitely, definitely grade A results. The other one will be on how I installed the DS64s and also how I wired up my tortoise switch machines, as well as how I programmed the DS64 with the ECOS 2. Wow, that's a lot to say. All right, so a couple of things that I'm going to be working on on this month will be laying down the sand for the beach, as well as scratch building some stairs going into the beach. Also doing a retaining wall. Uh, I have this like sheet, kind of like styrofoam sheet of bricks. Um, yeah, anyways, you guys will see when it happens. Uh, let's see what else. Installing those lights. Yeah, so more wiring. Yay! That's it. So I will see you on the next time here on Hobby Adventures. Just remember to keep on modeling. Mm -hmm.